you might have a person who can achieve results for you in a particular area. He is not partisan, but the work that he does would be a credit to your political party because it will bring quality and uh, uh, progress into the area. With health professionals, we will always need health professionals. And um, that is one of the reasons that we were expanding the infrastructure in the healthcare space. You know, by building more chips compounds, by building more polyclinics, by building more hospitals, so that we could create more space for uh, absorbing health, uh, health professionals as they come uh, out of school. And so, once that expansion is taking place, there will be a demand and a need for, for them. But I have said that even as we're employing health professionals, we must also be taking into consideration where we have an excess of health professionals to see how we can sign agreements with foreign countries, allow them to go on fixed term migration uh, service, go and work for four or five years, gain some experience, and come back home. They'll come back home with more experience and come and join the service again. And so helping nurses to improve their qualification and experience to be able to go and work outside for a period of time and come back is something that we will also consider even as we're doing yearly postings of these professionals as they come out of school. And so um, that's, I think, is how we we'll work on it. Um, my comrade Bampo um, spoke about equal work for equal pay. This is what we worked on for many years as the universal pay structure, which is the single spine. And after arduous negotiations, we eventually came out with the Ghana universal salary structure, which was the, famously called the single spine. Since we left office, I hear the single spine no longer exists. The spine is broken <laughs> because some people have been taking off the spine and their services have been improved while others have been left marking time. And so what we're trying to achieve by equality in terms of work and pay has been dislodged again. And so you go to some uh, public offices, same proficiency, same qualification, same skill, but one, because they are secretary, in a certain establishment and three times what their colleague in other establishments and it's unfair, it's unjust and that is what we try to cure by the GUSS but we will listen to labor and we will work with you, you are our partners and see what we can do to come up with a fair remuneration system in the public uh, services. You cannot get complete equality but at least you can get fairness in terms of how people are remunerated in the public uh, service. And with Reverend Benson, pastors are suffering. And I've always said that our pastors are among the first to notice when the economy is declining. Aggregation is dwindling. You will see it in the collection bowl. You will see it. The metamorphosis of 10 CD and 5 CD notes and 1 CD notes will be very obvious. And you'll see a very visible absence of 50s and 100s and 200 notes. Then you know that sometimes you even see coins in the collection bowl. Then you know that the economy is in crisis. And so, like Pastor said, NDC is going to come and work. Our first priority will be to stabilize the macroeconomy and then also stabilize the depreciation of the CD because the depreciation of the currency has an effect on every other sector of the uh, uh, economy. And so if we're able to do that and we accelerate the growth of our country and we're able to bring in more inward investment, this government has sacked most of the players in the upstream sector for eight years. There has been no single addition to our oil and gas production. And yet, we're in, in the transition period for oil and gas. This is the time we should be pumping that oil and gas like crazy. Because the transition is happening, we're going into cleaner energy, 
And a time will come when you have what we call stranded assets. Stranded assets are what will happen when the world has done the transition into renewable energy and you have oil in the ground, but it's of no use to anybody. And so we must encourage our partners to work assiduously to come and increase oil and gas production. We must get the ENIs of this world to come. We have a shortfall in gas production. And so what is making our electricity more expensive is that we're having to import liquid uh, uh, crude oil to fire some of the thermal plants. Just the building, a turbo gas processing plant is the most transformational investment that has been made in this country in, as, after Akosombo, that is the next most transformational plant that investment that has been made. And thank the memory of our late president, uh, uh, President John Atamelos for that. I came and continued and commissioned it. But that plant is saving us more than $500 million every year, which we would have used to pay for crude oil. And if we're able to increase and bring on a second gas train, Talo uh, has more gas to bring on board. If we get ENI to come back and, you know, also uh, uh, drill and produce more gas, it will bring the cost of uh, electricity down and it will increase the non-tax revenue that we get. We must invest in the cocoa sector, stop the mismanagement in the cocoa sector. The headquarters of Cocoa Board alone spent 3.4 billion CDs in one year. I mean, why? Are you growing the cocoa trees in Cocoa House or what? And meanwhile, the share of the farmer dwindled to its lowest. And so the farmers had no incentive to look after the cocoa farms. And so we should rather change it. The amount spent on headquarters must come down. The amount spent on the farmers must go up so that they can invest in the farms and make sure that we're able to export and bring more uh, money in. And so we should be able to do all that so that we can grow the economy. And once the economy is growing, more people are having money in their pockets. Reverend uh, Benson, you're going to see that the collections are going to start coming back to, to normal.